Hi everyone, my name is Mark McDougall and I teach phys ed at Elliott River Elementary. Uh, my uh, focus for the video today will be on skillful learning and the skill that I'm going to be working on is juggling. So we're going to be teaching you how to juggle today. Uh, there's lots of great reasons uh, to learn to juggle. Uh, at our school we teach it because it's good for hand-eye coordination, it's also good for ambidexterity, which means the ability to use both sides of your body equally. There's even some research that says it does some connections uh, between the hemispheres of your brain to help you think better, although a lot of my colleagues might question that one. Uh, but the best reason to learn to juggle really is it's just a lot of fun. It's really a good activity to know and it's a, it's a cool skill to have. So what are you going to need? You're going to need uh, some space uh, and to juggle in so that you're not running into anything or, or banging into anything and you're going to need something to juggle. Myself, I like to use these cush balls when I juggle. Uh, they're nice and soft and they don't roll away when you drop them and I do drop them quite often so when I do drop it I don't have to run around the room trying to find it. I just pick it up off the floor and I'm good to go again. So you can use um, some kind of ball like that. You can use hacky sacks. You um, could substitute with pairs of socks if you had to, those will work. Um, I don't recommend that you use anything breakable. So eggs are mm, probably not a great idea. That's quite messy and I wouldn't go with that, but I'll leave that up to you. Uh, actually, don't leave it up to you. Don't use eggs. Uh, find something nice and uh, easy to juggle with and get yourself a nice space and we'll go through the pattern and teach you how to do this. So uh, what we're gonna work on is what I call the three ball cascade. This is the most common pattern in juggling and we're going to go through that and break it down for you and teach it to you in pieces and then put it all together to where you're able to master uh, uh, juggling yourself. We're going to work through, we work through a number of levels when we teach juggling. So we start at level one and we move our way up to uh, all the way to our highest level which is level seven and level seven means that you can do a hundred throws in a row without dropping the ball. So it's a quite advanced juggler when you can get to level seven, but we're gonna show you the steps to, uh, to go through from learning that from the start. And if you follow all the patterns, um, hopefully you'll get there as well, okay? So uh, when we start uh, to do the three ball cascade, we don't start with three balls right away. The first level, level one, we're only gonna use one ball. So I'm gonna put two balls on the floor and I'm gonna start with just one. I'm going to hold my hands, and this is important, i got to get nice and comfortable, feet shoulder width apart, I'm going to hold my hands in front of me, just like I'm holding a square piece of glass right here, okay, and I'm going to hold it by the bottom of the piece of glass, so my hands are facing up at my waist level, just like this, okay, one, the ball in one hand, holding that piece of glass like this. The top of the, the top of the square is where I'm going to aim for with the ball, so when I throw the ball, I'm going to toss it with an underhand swing this way, right by my belly button, and I'm going to aim for the top corner of that square up here. When the ball gets to the top of that square, I'm going to clap my hands, and then I'm going to catch the ball with my opposite hand. So it's going to be, we call it throw, clap, catch. That's the name of, uh, of level one. Throw, clap, catch, because that's what I'm going to do. So I'm starting here again. I'm going to throw it, clap, catch with the opposite hand. Throw, clap, catch. So once I go from one side, I'm going to throw it back the opposite way with my other hand. So I got to use, have to learn to use both hands equally. So in juggling, both hands are the same. You don't use one hand all the time, you use them both the same all the time. So throw, clap, catch, throw, clap, catch. And I'm going to keep going with this until I can make 10 of those in a row without dropping it. Okay, so once I can make 10 in a row, I don't know if that's 10, somewhere around 10. Once you can make 10 in a row on the throw clap catch without dropping it, then you can move on to the second level. So if you uh, don't have 10 in a row, keep practicing it, okay? Um, so level two now. So we've got 10 throws in a row, throw, cl throw clap catch, and we're gonna move on to level two. I'm gonna add a second ball now. So I'm gonna have one in each hand. I'm gonna throw the first ball when it gets to the top of that corner, like we said before, I'm going to throw the second ball in the opposite direction to the other corner. And then I'm going to catch the first ball, catch the second ball. So it's going to be throw, throw, catch, catch. All right. And I really want to try to get these 
the same height on both sides. So I'm going to try to make two even throws. So I'm going to, I'll stand back here a little bit. So I'm going to start here and it's going to be throw, throw, catch, catch, throw, throw, catch, catch. Uh, sometimes it's easier to start with your non-dominant hand because uh, if you throw with your dominant hand first, sometimes the second one doesn't go quite as high. And we're really trying to aim for those corners so we can predict where they're going to come down. You want to make sure you don't throw too wide because throwing it way out to the side will throw you off your pattern. So try to keep it contained in here just at these two corners. Throw, throw, catch, catch. I really think that this is the most important stage when we're learning to juggle. The throw, throw, catch, catch. Once you can do that one, uh, the rest of it will become a lot easier. If you struggle with this one, you're not going to really have a, it's going to be very difficult to move to three if you can't do the throw, throw, catch, catch well. So while you're walking around the house, you know, just fooling around, this is the one to always be practicing. Throw, throw, catch, catch, throw, throw, catch, catch. You want to be able to get that so it's really automatic, okay? And you can watch them at the peaks if you want. And once you can do 10 in a row, then you can move up and we're going to try the next level, level three. So in level three, we're now up to three balls. So it's getting real, okay? So the first thing you have to know is how to hold the ball, because when you're gonna start with two in one hand, you have to be able to hold them properly so you can throw them easily. So I'm gonna take these two fingers and my thumb, and I'm gonna put the first ball in there. The second ball is gonna go in the back of my hand and be held by those two smaller fingers. And the third ball obviously is in my opposite hand. So when you're going to level three, uh, you're going to always start with the hand that has two, uh, two juggling balls in it. So that way it'll work out evenly. You'll see what I mean. So when I start with this hand, I'm going to throw the first ball. When it gets to the top, I'm going to throw the second ball. When it gets to the top on this side, I'm going to throw the third ball this way. And I'm going to finish with two, ball, two juggling balls in this hand and one in this hand. So it's going to go like this. Throw, 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 catch. And then back the other way, starting with this hand, throw, 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 finish with two in this hand. Here we go. Throw, 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 catch, throw, 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 catch. Okay, so I'm going to continue that again, trying to get, uh, we call that a flash in juggling. So when I'm doing a pattern like a three ball cascade, so when I do one throw with each ball and catch them to finish, that's called a flash. So I want to be able to do 10 flashes in a row without a drop. So just throw, 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 catch, throw, 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 catch, throw, 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 catch, throw, 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 that's four, throw, 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 five, throw, 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 six, three, seven, eight, throw, 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 nine, throw, 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 ten. Perfect. So now we, when you're able to catch 10 of those in a row without a drop, now we're going to move to level four. And in level four, we're not going to stop after we finish the flash. We're going to try to continue to get more and more catches in a row without a drop. So the way I like to do it is I'll start with a flash just with three, three throws. One, two, three, catch. And then I'll try to add a fourth throw. So one, two, three, four, catch. And then I'll add a fifth throw. Two, three, four, five, and then six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Keep adding one throw each time. One, two, four, five, six, seven. And if you drop one, just go back and start over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I'm getting close now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the last one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There. Once you can get ten in a row, that means you are finished level four, and we're going to move on to try level five, level six, and level seven. And the only difference there is I'm, it's the number of catches that you have to make. So once I've finished level four, I'm going to move to level five, which is trying to get 25 catches in a row without a drop. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to stop this time. I'm just going to keep going. 12, 13, 14. Okay, till I can get 25 catches in a row. And you can keep going until you drop it, so see how far you can get. So to be level five, you need to make 25 catches at our school. 
To be level six, you have to be able to make 50 catches in a row without a drop. And to be a level seven, you have to be able to do 100 throws and catches without a drop. And 100 sounds like a lot, and it is a lot. Uh, once you get into that level, you're a pretty proficient juggler. So that's a really good thing to aim for. Uh, one couple of tips I want to give you are a couple of uh, pointers. Just one of the things that people do when they first start out is when they throw the ball, their hands start moving up like this to catch the ball quicker. And it makes it more difficult. It's hard on your shoulders. It really makes it hurt, or hurt a little bit. Plus, it takes, it makes you have less time to catch the ball. So keep your hands down low. Let the ball fall to you. Okay? Let the ball fall down and catch it down at waist level. So you, don't, you want to reach up and grab it, but don't be tempted. Just let the ball fall down to your waist level to catch it. All right? The second thing people do sometimes is instead of throwing from side to side like this, aiming for those corners, they start going just backwards towards themselves. And then the juggling balls get in the way and they start hitting each other and you, it, it's harder to catch them, it's harder to concentrate. So you really want to go on this side to side pattern so that they don't, uh, they don't collide and you have lots of space to catch them, okay? So those are just two things that you got to be aware of that they, you don't start doing that by accident because if you do, it's going to make it a lot more difficult, all right? So that's the three ball cascade and that's what we start with and um, and we're going to show you now that we finished that, I'm going to show you a couple of tricks. Now, I'm not a great trick juggler so I'm going to try to show you how to do these it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm very good at doing them myself. So maybe we'll kind of learn together as we go along. So the first thing we're going to show you, or the first uh, new thing I'll show you, is what we call the reverse cascade. So the cascade pattern is the one that we just started with. So in the cascade pattern, I'm throwing three throws. I'm throwing the ball across my body each time underneath the other throw. Okay? Once you get used to that pattern, you'll remember it. This, the reverse cascade is just the opposite of the cascade. So instead of throwing here underneath through the middle, all my throws are going to come from the outside over the top. Okay? So it's going to look kind of like, kind of like that. I'll try it again. Like that. Okay? So we're going to try to do that. And I'm going to break it down the same way that I broke down the cascade pattern. I'm going to break down the, uh, the reverse cascade in the same way. So I'm going to start with one ball again, and I'm just going to do throw, clap, catch, but this time the ball is coming over the top instead of coming, I'm throwing it out over the top instead of throwing it through the middle. Okay, so I want to get 10 throws and catches, just like I did in level one with the cascade. So I follow the same kind of pattern here. Okay, and then I'm going to add the second ball. So the second level two, remember, was throw, throw, catch, catch. And again, instead of going underneath the ball this time, I'm going to throw one ball, and then I'm going to throw the other one over top of it on the outside. So it's going to be throw, throw, catch, catch. And the other hand, throw, throw, catch, catch. So get used to kind of throwing uh, each one over the top. Okay? So we're going to go throw, throw, catch, catch. Throw, throw, catch, catch. Throw, throw. <laughs> this is one I'm still learning, by the way, so uh, bear with me on that. Okay, so ten throws in a row without a miss over the top on each throw. So throw, throw, catch, catch. Moving up. So we're going to add the third ball now and we're going to try to do a flash on the reverse cascade. So I'm going to throw over the top every throw and I'm going to try to make three throws and three catches. So we'll start with two in one hand, one in the other hand, and it's going to be throw, 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 and I didn't catch it. So I'm going to start again. Ready? Throw, 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 catch, throw, 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 Catch, throw, 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 catch, throw, 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 catch. Really try to keep them uh, not going too far. Sometimes people throw them and they go really wide. Then you're reaching way out to try to catch them, and it makes it harder to keep going. So this is a the flash is one I still practice on the on the reverse cascade. I'm practicing it this week, kind of every morning trying to get it, and it's getting there, but it, it's still not easy for me. Okay. Once you're able to do that, remember, we're going to go up by one each time. So I got, I did a flash of three, then I'm going to do four throws. Three, yeah, start over. So one, two, three, catch. One, two, three, four, catch. 
One, two, three, four, five, catch. One, two, three, four, five, six, catch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, catch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, catch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, catch. Ooh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ah! I would have to start it all over, okay? After you get 10 in a row with the, um, with the 10 throws in a row and 10 catches in a row, uh, then you can move up and try to get to 25 and try to get to 50 and try to get to 100. I've been trying to get as high as I can, and this week I think 17 was the highest I made without a drop, but I'm still working on it. That's the great thing about juggling. You're going to drop the ball a lot, but it's just a matter of continuing on Practice, practice, practice. The more you practice, the easier it's going to become for you. So there's really no substitute for, for that. So you just got to keep working at it and keep practicing. So that's the reverse cascade. So we have a normal cascade and we have the reverse cascade. And you can try to switch even from one to the other. So maybe do one, two, four, five, do a few throws this way, and then switch to the, the reverse cascade. And we can go back and forth from one to the other. Anyhow, that's one trick. I'm going to show you a second trick that I'm working on. And I'm a work in progress, so I'm going to work on this one. This is one called columns. Okay, so in columns, what happens is you're going to throw one ball up the middle. And when it come, it's going to go straight up in the air and straight back down the middle. The other two, you're going to throw up the sides, and they're going to come down the sides of it. So it kind of looks like this. Okay, so one in the middle, two in the sides. Just like that. So we're going to try to go into that from a three ball cascade. So what's going to happen is after I'm juggling for a little bit, I'm going to throw one ball a little bit higher into the middle. And as it's coming down, as it gets to the top, I'm going to throw the other two up on the outsides of it, catch the one in the middle, toss it back up, catch the ones on the sides. That kind of thing. Okay. So as I'm juggling along here, one up high in the middle. Okay. One up high, then two up high. Whoa. Just like that, except you don't drop it. So I'm going to do that again. So I'll, I start with trying to get it once. So going here, one. Okay, and then I'm going to try to get two in a row. One. No. Nope. It's really important to get a good first throw to set yourself up for this one. So here we go. One, two. And then I'm back into my pattern again. And after you can do one, and after you can do two, work on three, four, and so on, until you can go back and forth um, pretty easily without, uh, without having to stop. So that's, uh, that's something to work on. Um, I'm still working on that, like I said. Two, three. But that's the second trick. That's called columns. I'm going to try another trick. Now, these ones that I'm trying now... I'm really just working on getting to know them. The next trick is called a half shower. So what means, what's a half shower? That means I'm doing the regular cascade pattern, but uh, one hand, instead of throwing the ball underneath, this hand's gonna throw over the top like the reverse cascade, and this hand's gonna throw underneath like the regular cascade. So I'm gonna switch it so it's gonna be coming over the top from this side and underneath from this side. So it's a little bit unusual, I'm combining the two uh, the cascade and the reverse cascade together to create a, a completely different pattern. Okay, so uh, I'm going to start just with, by going in a cascade and every once in a while I'm going to toss over the top with my right hand. Okay, so I'll start here. I'm just regular cascade and then over the top. Oop. Do that again. Regular cascade, over the top, over the top, over the top. Okay, and once I get used to throwing over the top, maybe every few throws. Okay, then I'm going to try to increase the speed of the number of times that I throw over the top. So I'm going to start here. Get used to always throwing over the top with this hand and always underneath with the other hand. Okay, so... Uh, that's the reverse cascade, or the, sorry, that's the half shower from the right. And you also want to practice that from your weak hand as well. 
it's going to be a lot more difficult coming from your weak side or from your non-dominant side instead of your dominant side because generally I just don't throw as well with this hand and I find that I, I have a lot harder time throwing over the top with this hand than I do with my dominant hand. So um, that's something to work on though. It just takes practice and um, the more you do it, the easier hopefully it will become. Uh, what's next? The other thing we could do, um, there is a trick that I can't, uh, that is called juggler's tennis and that combines uh, both a half shower from the right and a half shower from the left. And that is you would juggle a regular pattern and you would pick one ball and that ball would always go over the top, back and forth over the top, and the other two are going underneath in the middle. I'll give it a try, but it's very much something I haven't uh, haven't gotten down yet, so don't be surprised if I mess it, if I mess it up. Over the top with that one, over the top again with that one. I'll try to do one flash of that. Over, over. Yeah, there you go. So maybe that's a good way to start it, maybe, the flash. There. So get used to it. Let's say, let's say the green ball is the one I'll try to throw over the top both ways. Over the top with the green, over the top with the green. Still a work in progress, like I said. So um, I'm going to just finish up here uh, by saying that when you're juggling, if you go from one level to the next and you find that uh, it's difficult when you get to a higher level, back up a little bit, try the level before that, redo that one a bunch of times until you get really comfortable with that level, and then move up again. So um, be patient with yourself. Try it a little bit uh, every day to, to, to get a little bit better, um, but understand that uh, it takes lots and lots of practice to get good at it. Once you get the pattern down, I think you'll uh, find it's a really enjoyable activity and it'll be, uh, it'll be something you'll be able to do uh, to entertain your friends and uh, it's a pretty cool trick to be able to do. I'm going to finish up just uh, trying to do uh, one level seven juggle, so I'm going to try to see if I can get to 100 throws in a row and I hope that you uh, get a chance to try this and learn this new skill and um, yeah, keep on juggling. Okay, so here I go. I'm going to go for 100 throws in a row, see if I can make it. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. There you go. So good luck with your quest on trying to get uh, 100 throws in a row. Try some different tricks. There's lots of good videos out there. If you search on the internet, you'll see lots of good juggling videos. It's really one of those activities that, uh, that's, that's fun to learn and it's fun to practice. So good luck and hopefully um, we'll see you someday juggling uh, just like that. Take care. Hi everyone, my name is Beth Mugga and I'm a teacher at Queen Charlotte Intermediate um, and I teach art and physical education. So today I'll be sharing with you an art video. So we'll be doing one of my favorites which is watercolor painting. So I thought today we could do some abstract watercolor. So here are some examples of what we will be doing and we'll discuss a little bit about the elements of art as well as principles of design as we go. I hope you enjoy. Let's get to it. All right, so I'm just going to go over the materials that you'll need today. So what I've done is I just 
put a garbage bag down on my table just to protect the surface from any paint. Um, next, you'll need watercolor paper if you have it. If not, just use whatever paper you do have. I have taped it down just to make a really nice frame around the artwork when it's finished. Also, my paper won't move around on me while I do this piece of art. Next, I have a piece of paper towel ready to go. I have my water for uh, the watercolor and I have multiple colored paints. Now, if you don't have watercolor, you can use whatever you have. If you have acrylic paint, that's fine. Um, or maybe you want to do this with colored pencils. Whatever you have, you can use, okay? Um, now, just to go back to the examples, these are the two examples that I've already done. Um, you see that I have gone in with some pen work and done some doodling, so we will do that as well. So if you have a black pen or any other color pen, I have a white one here as well, which I like, um, grab those, okay, for later when the artwork is dry. Just to show you another couple examples, or another few, these are a few that I've done um, the other day, but I haven't yet gone in with the pen. So I'll do that a bit later. All right, so we will get started. To begin, we'll be making a series of shapes. So shape is one of the seven elements of art, and there are two types of shape. Shapes can be geometric, meaning they're symmetrical in appearance. Some examples of geometric shapes include circles, squares, triangles, rectangles, and ovals. Shapes can also be organic, so meaning they're irregular or asymmetrical. And shapes found in nature are often really good examples of organic shapes. So in this piece of art, you can use any combination of shapes that you would like. So it's important to note that this piece of art doesn't need to look like anything in particular, and it's a form of abstract art. So don't worry about the end result, just enjoy the process of this relaxing style of art. Another element of art that we'll use in our artwork today is the element of line. So line is a mark made using a drawing tool and can be horizontal, vertical, diagonal, curved, thick or thin. So I want you to try incorporating some different lines into your artwork today. The last item I would like to address is the principles of design for this piece of artwork. So principles of design are what allows an artist to create an attractive piece of art. Um, some examples of principles of design include emphasis, balance, contrast, rhythm, pattern, unity, movement, and proportion. So today, I'd like to focus on the use of pattern. So pattern is the repetition of the same element. So for example, the use of line, shape, or colors over and over again. So this can create visual excitement in a piece of art. Another way we'll be creating pattern is when we use pen to create doodles that will complete our artwork. So the best way to accomplish this is by picking one of the painted shapes, when it's dry of course, and repeating a small simple line or shape. All right, 
So I hope you enjoy the process. Stand up, gotta clear your eyes, gotta walk on to the other side, let a new sun. Stand up, gotta clear your eyes, gotta walk on to the other side, let a new sun. See you. 
Hello there. My name is Wendy Evers Forrester. I'm a music teacher and I teach at LM Montgomery School. I also teach strings and it just happens that here at home I have four of the members of the string family. I have a violin, a viola, a cello, and you can see him standing up over there, a string bass. And I'd like to talk to you about these instruments. Each of the instruments in the string family has four strings. It has a bridge right here that the strings go across. It holds the strings up so they make a sound. It has a tailpiece that the strings are attached to, little fine tuners down here, and tuning pegs. This particular instrument, the violin, you play under your chin. You can make big sounds. You can make high sounds. And you can do crunchy sounds, like in a scary story. Like a spooky Halloween story. Or you can just pluck it. Or you can play a tune that I think probably everybody's heard before. It was written by a composer who lived a long time ago and his name, I'm going to see if you can guess what it is. Did you guess Beethoven? Because that's who it is. That's the composer, one of my favorite composers. You can also play fiddle tunes on the violin. Is there a difference between the violin and the fiddle? Not really. It's the same instrument. It's just what you play on it. You could play a really happy fiddle tune You could play something long and lovely. This string instrument is called a viola. It's a little bit bigger than the violin. You can see the difference in the size. If you look at the big picture there, the viol is just a little bit bigger. It has a little bit different sound as well. It has a bit of a deeper sound than the violin, but it has a lot of the same things. And you notice, you also play it under your chin. The 
interesting thing about the viola is it has the same strings as the cello does. It has a C string and a G string like the violin, a D string like the violin, and an A string like the violin, but it's got a little bit different sound because it's a little bigger instrument. The strings on the viola are an octave higher than the strings on the cello, which has the same ones. It also has the same as the violin. It has sound holes. It has a bridge. It has tuning pegs on the bottom and the top. And I didn't mention on the violin, but it has a fingerboard too. And it's kind of, you kind of know that's where your fingers go. But again, you can pluck it. The same as the violin, you can pluck it or you can play it with the bow. This instrument in the string family is the cello. It's kind of my favorite instrument because this is my main instrument. Although I do play a little bit on all of the string instruments. The cello is similar to all the other string instruments because it has four strings, C, G, D, and A, just like the viola. And it has a tailpiece and fine tuners and a bridge. This is holds the strings up and sound holes and a fingerboard and pegs up at the top. But the cello, because it's much bigger, has to sit on the floor. And so at the end, there's an end pin. So I put that on the floor and I sit down to play the cello. It has a deeper sound than the viola but not as deep as the string bass that you can see in the picture. We'll get to that instrument in just a minute. But just like the violin and the viola, you can play the same tune. instrument do you like the best? I know what my answer is. Hopefully it's the cello. But I wouldn't be unhappy if you said it was the violin or the viola. Now I'm going to change to the bass. It's very heavy. It's like the other string instruments in that it has four strings, it has a bridge, it has a tailpiece, it has sound holes, and it has a fingerboard. The tuners, if you can see them, look a little bit different. They're metal on the bass because the strings are so big. Those pegs have to be very, very strong to be able to tune it. You can play the same tune on the bass as you can on the cello, or you could play something scary. I wonder if you've heard that before. So in an orchestra, the biggest instrument other than the harp is the string bass. 
Sometimes string bass players, instead of just using their end pin, just like the cello, to move it around, they put a wheel under the bottom of the bass so that it's easier to move. I'm going to play you the same tune that you heard on the cello, the violin, and the viola. And you'll have to see if it sounds different because it's a much bigger instrument with a much deeper voice. So again, I wonder, which instrument did you like the best? I'm pretty fond of the cello, but I really like the bass too. It's fun to play because it's so big, strong sounding. In an orchestra, there's sometimes seven or eight basses, maybe 10 cellos and many, 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 many violins and violas. I hope you enjoyed listening. I'll see you soon with some more information.